What's up, Traders Edge? It's Mark Sebastian, your only option, and this is your look at the week that was. Today, I'm going to talk to you about what's happening with the S&P 500 and volatility and what's happening with the Qs and volatility, and we're going to look at the VIX. I'm also going to take a look at some of the other um, you know, metals and oil, but we're really going to spend the bulk on S&P and VIX. So let's dig in. closed on Friday up 57 points. So take a look at the stock chart. This is a massive candle followed by a, a, a big up candle, but an inside day. Uh, well off the highs, we ended the week down, believe it or not. Um, we, we closed on last Friday, the 28th at 52, 54, 35 down. So call it, you know, little less than 1% on the week. But what is interesting is that, yeah, we moved down less than 1%. And VIX closed on Friday, or excuse me, closed on Thursday, not Friday, closed on Thursday at 1301. It's now closed on fr the following Friday. So, you know, one, two, three, four, five trading days later, and it's 16. This is worrisome. The fact that we had a rally as strong as we did and VIX gave away almost nothing tells you that the market is worried about something. The pattern that I've been talking about, VIX versus SPX, I want you to pay close attention here, folks, because this is key. All right. Since December, higher highs and higher lows. This is the pattern that the S&P 500 has been in, and we broke out of this range on Thursday and stayed out of it. Now, I'm sure Friday made people feel all well and good, but I don't think it should because we're still in a major danger zone. We're still in a major danger zone. Now, getting back to VIX, we closed the day with April and the cash index on top of each other and June trading 16 and a half, just above the cash VIX. The curve is extremely flat. All right, and what's causing all these worries? It's the bond market, folks. Uh, bond fears are back. We are right at the breaking point. If the bond market opens up down big on Monday, I think we could see the market finally crack. Uh, but TLT closed 91.39. IEF also uh, closing nicely down, down to 93.14. Uh, they both look like they're going to fall apart. So these interest rates appear to be what is driving SPX to behave the way it is behaving. Um, some other kind of points of interest are the continued strength in gold, the continued strength in oil, and the continued strength in silver. All these add up to people are terrified. And implied vol is really expensive relative to how much we're moving. And I'll tell you, what I think is going to happen next week, I think we're heading for a down week. And it could be selling into earnings. We have some earnings coming up next week. I'll get to those in my look at the week ahead. But I think it's earnings and CPI. CPI next week, I think the whole market is just watching it and terrified because Fed governors are starting to hint that there's not going to be a rate cut in June. And let me tell you something, folks. Listen up closely here. Right, and then I'll end this. There is not going to be a rate cut in June. Any gains in the S and P that have been created because of the belief that rates were going to be dropped, those are going to dissipate. I don't think there's going to be a rate cut in September. If the economy is doing this well and inflation is still there, rates are going to remain high. So don't put your money 
on a rate cut. Go with that mantra as you trade. Invest in stocks you like, short stocks you hate, trade options. But get this whole, I'm going to play a rate cut in June thing out of your system because it ain't going to happen. All right, folks, I'll be back later, uh, later this weekend with my look at the week ahead. I am Mark Sebastian. I am your only option. Have a good one.